Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the RHAP BNB for week seven of Survivor 47. My name is Mike Bloom, and okay, everybody, it's officially now the jury. Just when you thought it was safe to go into the merge, here comes Jeff Probst with a proverbial shark mouth that contains a bag of rocks to determine the course of misfortune for one contestant until it wasn't, and then it was the course of misfortune for another contestant, but it's only good fortunes today, as uh, we are talking, of course, on the eve of a very important vote. We're going to talk about an episode where half the contestants didn't vote, and uh, the players were split like a highly contested electorate, and we got to see the return of a very interesting twist to carry out some very interesting results, and especially a very interesting reaction to said vote. Uh, of course, I'd love to welcome in the co-owner of the BNB here, who will never be separated from me via rock draw. It's Liana Boris. Yes, I'm I'm happy to be here, I guess, Mike. Uh, you know, look, I wasn't here last week. And if I was, I was going to sing the praises of Survivor. Look, you guys talked about it. We got the merge, regardless of how you want to say it. And then they took it all away. And only four people were eligible to go home. And that was really painful. But you know what? Regardless of the pain, there's got to be some pleasure. And I think that this group can find it. Yeah, I mean, isn't the lyrics to the infamous song, Last Christmas... You gave me a merge, and the very next week, you took it away? Yep, I'll be singing that this Christmas. <laughs> well, wham! Here comes our guest for the week. It is Frail Mary, Mary Kukowski, uh, fresh from her tour de force performance as Bella Swan <laughs> in the Twilight franchise in our Halloween Brant Steel. Mary, have you broken character yet, or are you still fully immersed in it still? I've got some ketchup right over here. No. <laughs> Yeah. For you, Mike. Look, Just listen, the Survivor Social Hour infamously didn't have condiments, so they would have loved that ketchup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's blasphemous. You know, you got to have some mustard or something to put on those hot dogs. I know. But, that was ridiculous. Yeah. Well, no, Mary, I'm... give us your thoughts so far. We're, you know, depending on what the episode count might be, either halfway or a little over halfway through the season so far. Again, feels like the game is now going to really start into a new phase with truly going individual with the jury starting next week. What have your thoughts been through the first seven weeks? Uh, here's the thing. <laughs> we love it when a sentence starts with, here's the thing. <laughs> if, if, so, yeah, if it's not uh, a hit Kelly Clarkson song, I don't want to hear it. I believe uh, most of my last appearances here at the b, &B have been with my uh, partner in crime, Asia Welch. So, um, you know, I'm after <laughs> solo. <laughs> Um, let's just say first three weeks of the season went real strong for me. I was really, I was loving it. Everything was great. Um, or like really the first two weeks, <laughs> but, um, uh, due to an abundance of circumstances with a busy life and then also, uh, just feeling sad after episode three, I watched episodes four, five, six, and seven yesterday and today. Ooh, <laughs> oh, interesting. I was I feel so behind. I was like, when, when Liana asked for me to come on the BNB, I was like, great, this gives me an opportunity to catch back up because I feel I feel out of it and I feel sad about that but also I just needed to take a little breather from season mm -hmm. 47 mm -hmm. but I'm back and I and I will say that I think the time away was good because mm. I loved those last four episodes. It was oh, great. Good. I had a really great time. Um, I mean, you know, I, I I went through my my grief period mm -hmm. and my mourning process but you know I think we're all back and um and, and at this point, like, there are some fun characters. I feel like it took me about three or four episodes to really, really feel like I got to know everyone, partially because, you know, the edit was hiding, like, four people. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, like, I think it's been said over the last several episodes, like, Caroline, Genevieve, these people are popping now. They're coming out. They're playing. Sue's out here. I'm loving it. So, <laughs> and Sue, and, and Sue. also Sue, and also Sue, do it for the 45 year olds. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's been a great season. I'm. I. I don't really know because I'm so behind on some of the podcasts. I don't know like what the the thoughts in the ether are, like what what everyone else is feeling. But um, for the first time in a while, taking a bit more of like a casual stance to it, I'm. I'm loving it. Talking about it with my parents, we're loving it. So you know, it's a good time. <laughs> Yeah, it is interesting because I think there was a lot of talk last week, both on this podcast and off about like, what do we look like in a post-Rome society? You know, mm -hmm. like this was a character that took up a lot of airtime, especially in his boot episode. And he also was an easy consensus target. So 
what would the state of things look like afterwards? And what we got was something that kind of answered the question, but didn't, you know, it was looking at, okay, basically we forced Tuku to go to a pre-merge tribal council in the post-merge and the person that was probably going to get picked off there ends up getting picked off here. Uh, and so it does, again, kind of delay the answer to that question. We get a lot of interesting setup, Liana, in the first 15 minutes of like, oh my God, is Andy going to finally turn on the Gatas? Has he been pushed, bent so far that he's now going to break? Oh my God, there's a women's alliance happening. And then reaching into a bag of rocks kind of stymies all that for the rest of the episode. Yeah, exactly. And I actually think it's so interesting that we do end up with an original Tuku boot, right? Where it even more so feels like it's not the merge. Like it even more so feels like we're just going back to the original tribe format because of the ultimate outcome. And also because, you know, we see some of the talk at the reward where, oh, okay, well, if they get rid of Rachel, which they probably will, then it's going to be, you know, us together, you know, yellow and red, we're making orange, baby, making fire, right? Us against blue, let's do this. But then that doesn't ultimately end up happening. So then even those seeds that were potentially put in place, it's like, mm, I don't even think that that's going to happen. Where I do think that we're going to kind of go back to the Andy stuff that we got at the beginning of the episode with him trying to turn on the rest of Gata. So it just felt, I don't, okay, I never want to use the phrase a waste of time. Oh my God. Because I don't believe wow. that anything is really a waste of time. I think you can learn anything from every experience. Every experience gives Very you something. Uh, but it just felt like we hit rewind. Like we just went back past the Rome. Smash booth. the hourglass. Like, yeah, we smashed the hourglass. These episodes should have been aired in reverse order. Like we should have had, okay, Tuku goes to tribal council, gets rid of someone else. Then yeah, what if they just show it out of context and they're like, wait, why is Rachel there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, huh, that's weird. That's ah, okay. She leaves. She just like goes back. I also, oh my God. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So th that's my thought. I'm done talking for now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd be interested, Mary, to see like in retrospect of the season, watching it in a binge yeah. might make this episode go down a little smoother to Liana's point is because it seems like from the next time on, we're immediately going to get a follow up to Andy trying to get revenge. And this was more so just a bit of a detour on the way to the ultimate destination. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I can see that. This is what I'll, I'll say is like, I know there's a lot like I'm, I'm an old school sur survivor purist. I am. But in order to enjoy the show that we have, I feel like the way I look at it is whenever someone gets screwed over in the game and and I, you know, I've played ORGs, I've played LRGs, the LRG I played, I got I was a mergatory boot like it, it. It sucks. It's not fun. You know, it now like are we talking like like outright mergatory like you did the whole half safe half not or were you just the merge boot? More or less half safe, half not. Like all of my allies pretty much ended up being in the half safe and they didn't vote. And so I was just, I got oh, so it was this, unlike. basically. Yeah. Basically, it was more or less this kind of scenario. And unfortunately, what I'd say is kind of the way you have to wrap your mind around it is if you're at least given the opportunity to make some connections with people. Like Rachel was put in a bad scenario and if Rachel had gone home, that would have been really unfair. Like, I think, you know, for her, from her perspective, I don't, I don't view like the Tiana boot to be particularly like, unfair or whatever. I feel like it's like, she was on the bottom of her group. She didn't know it. She had those weeks to do it and uh, to get in a better position. And this is what it was. I have to look at it like, and I think Jeff looks at it this way, which is 99.8% of the time, if you get voted out, you probably could have done something to, to save yourself. Now, the, the thing that you might have had to do might have been weeks in the making that you like, it was like a thing that you couldn't have just done on that one day. Like it might've been a much bigger thing and there's so much luck involved. So, you know, it stinks. It is what it is. I feel, I feel really bad for Tiana. It's unfortunate, but I, I feel bad for everyone who gets voted out of Survivor uh, when they're not actively making horrible decisions. I mean, now you're kind of speaking like Tiana, right? She's like, I'm crying for myself and I'm crying for everybody who won't yeah. make the jury. I mean, it is interesting because I would sort of put Tiana in the same category as like a Jenny Guzan Bai on the pyramid mm -hmm. of being screwed over. Of uh, those I don't remember, Jenny Guzan Bai, she was part of a tribe that did a twist where they voted somebody out. And so theoretically she'd be safe for another round, but then they were going to vote someone else out immediately. And so it was like, okay, because the last place option wasn't available, she loses because she's second to last, basically, in the pecking order. I sort of put that on the same level. And, you know, 
people watched 44, so maybe they were planning for once they saw a version of this twist, like, okay, someone from the other tribe is going to have some ability to sway the votes. But it just seems like almost impossible to plan for. When you're a Survivor contestant, you have to plan for A through Z. You can't start adding letters of the Greek alphabet in there as well. Otherwise, you're going to drive yourself crazy over the lack of calories in your brain. The simpler way of looking at it is it's not planning for someone to get a magical advantage that will help you. It's think about it like I need to plan to make really good make a great impression on these people so that if someone got some sort of thing that I would be the one they'd want to use it on. Mm. And like that, that's what it, it's really what it boils down to is more of relationships. It, it boils down to the fact that Tiana couldn't see that Caroline and Sue had a relationship with Gabe that went beyond her and she didn't, she didn't do enough to break that up, you know? And I mean, and maybe, she, maybe she couldn't have, but that's the scenario. The scenario is she's out of the Alliance and it stinks. Um, there, there's, you know, I, I don't think like a lot of times when there's advantages used, it's a calculus of like, okay, well, instead, if this person had gotten with this person and voted this way, but this one is a little simpler. It's just, yeah, yeah she was, she was the bottom person on the alliance and it stinks. Um, mm-hmm. And, and it's very true that if she, if this had not happened and they were back together with, you know, and she made the merge, I don't think she would have been in this scenario, but it's like, it's like what Robin Steven said on the know-it-alls. This was final destination. It was just going to happen probably, you know, it's the way, it's the way it worked out. And now, now the Tribes are evened up, and here we go. Fit- fittingly, mm-hmm. a franchise that started with a plane crash for the flight attendant. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think. Obviously, if Rachel had gone home, then I think the conversation looks very different, right? Oh well, it goes back to the whole Matt Blankenship conversation, right? Of like, how screwed over was this person? Right, exactly. And then we're talking about, oh my gosh, like the. <laughs> talking about preparing for delta uh you know lambda's plans right like (laughs) this is just this is just it's just impossible but instead you know now we're having a conversation of like well this is what would have happened if tuku had just gone to tribal (laughs) like if just tuku had lost like this is what would have happened and then there's sort of some other like interesting smatterings but i actually don't think that the tribal council decision was ultimately that interesting to me because it was like well clearly they had talked about it and they were like prepared for this so the, yeah. that's what they did that was the that was the thing for me that maybe led to a, a lack of like big you know anticipation for this except for the thought of oh i wonder what's the face crack gonna be once rachel reveals the advantage is right. Saul gonna like come be outright with it or is he gonna give the performance of a lifetime <laughs> turns out yes and yes uh but the what? Uh, the but what? but I, from my perspective, at least, as soon as like Saul got the advantage and he said that one of them is safety without oh, power, it yeah. was like, okay, he's giving it to Rachel. Rachel's using safety without power. Tian is going to get voted out because we know that Sue, Caroline, and Gabe are a thing, and that's three versus two at best. Now, I was confused on one thing because I didn't rewatch it. Was um, could Saul choose which advantage to give, or was it Rachel's choice? So it was Rachel's choice allegedly. Okay, it so was they that. probably just cut that part out then, or or yeah, there's like I think there's a secret scene where it shows her finding the advantage, and she basically is able to right. take her pick. And you know, maybe if there were tighter numbers and it wasn't so open and shut, then she could use the block of vote. But it was so easy for her to just be like, yeah, nope. Uh, and this is also the, a very fun situation where. She got to arrive at tribal council before everybody else. Like half the people couldn't vote at that tribal council. And you think (laughs) that Jeff would also summarily dismiss them. But no, she's going to get back by herself, despite the fact that she basically left a, a final five vote early. I I was obsessed with that moment. Like I I thought first I was like maybe she'll go get to sit on the jury seats with everybody else cuz technically that's camp. Like camp right now is jury seats. But no, she's just the one person that has to go back to camp and just like chill by herself before everybody else comes back and tells her exactly what happened. So funny to me. I would be doing a happy dance if I was her. So oh, yeah. yeah, I mean that well, was great. Yes, but are we getting to like sandy territory, Mary, from your beloved token jeans and it's like why didn't you start this fire? Why didn't you get the camp going Rachel you had the extra time so sorry I I didn't know what a pace was yeah (laughs) um I I, like here's the other thing is okay pretend this doesn't happen pretend she doesn't she doesn't get this advantage it doesn't go home I think and this is what is you know this is how survivor works a lot yeah if she had gone home people would have said oh she was screwed by the swap whatever we've seen scenarios similar to this before though don't ask me to quote one but I'm sure there have been ones where like there is one person on the, oh, okay, here's one, you know, Amber Mariano, right? Yeah. I've seen scenarios where the person who is on the obvious outs 
um, does make it work for whatever reason and, you know, does, does get by. So it's possible. It could happen. Mm -hmm. I think the original plan that came in, like, I think that even if they were going to all vote out Rachel, I think that there was a non-zero chance that they wouldn't have, that they could have done one of the many alternative plans that were were brought up about, you know, voting out one of the uh, two coup members. So I think it was possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you say that, but then Caroline's like, she's the best to ever do it. You see the fact that you like her so much. That's why we got to get rid of her. Like (laughs) I love Caroline low key stepping in and just like, it feels actually very big brother to me where it's like, Somebody gets like a wild idea, especially just watching so much BB 26. Like someone comes up with this wild cockamamie idea. And then there's usually the person to come through with the bucket of cold water. And sometimes it doesn't work when you're dealing with people like Tucker and Angela. But Caroline very much is that person. Like Caroline's the Chelsea here being like, no, 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 no. We're not doing this right now. Stay the course, vote out Tiana or vote out Rachel. And then we're golden. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a question I have about Saul's advantage. Do you think yeah. someone else could just claim that they were the one to do it? Like, just sure. go go to Rachel think, privately and do it? Like, I, like, think, I don't mean should, could they. I think, do you think someone, like, would that be a good game move? Well, I think the only person that did would do it has been voted out in, the, in two Fair weeks enough. ago. Yeah, well, I think yeah. Jerome would guess, absolutely be like, you're welcome. That was me. I did that. I guess the question is, does Saul have the, like, the paper? Like, does he have the evidence? Still. Well, I assume he gave her the paper. Like, yeah, the butt it was, only, it was only one paper. So if it was only yeah. that one paper, but see, no one knows that except for him. But if somehow people knew, then like, that's almost why I would love in, in Survivor for people to be a little more aware of exactly what the, like, I want people to use production as a strategy. I want people to, to be able to claim that they did it to where Rachel has four people going up to her claiming that they saved her. Like, yeah, that'd be I, great. I mean, I think there's a very non-zero chance that happens. Like, cause I... I imagine Rachel's first instinct would be that it's one of either Andy, Sam, or Sierra. Sierra, yeah. Uh, And so, because then she doesn't know the other Lavos from a hole in the wall. So it would be interesting if, like, all three of them approach her saying it. I think that, I don't think they would. I think that Andy in, like, day three may have, but not Andy anymore, who's like, listen, you're just going to be fodder to the slaughterhouse coming up soon. Uh, (laughs) But Saul might at this point uh or maybe Saul might recruit somebody like a Genevieve and a teeny and maybe the three of them all do a little bit of three card Monty and are all going to her saying yeah I used the advantage on you so it's like okay well I like Lavo I don't know who used it on me so I can't target one specific person if the info comes out but I'm happy for Lavo do you think it's better for Saul to tell her or not yeah I so I was essentially debating all of the decisions that Saul had to make, right? And what he should do. So, okay. So one, he finds it. Okay. First decision, who's he going to give it to, right? So that's one decision. Second decision, does he tell the other people that he went on the reward with? Okay. That's a yes or no question. Then the other question is, does he tell Rachel that he's the one who saved her? Of all of those, the one I felt the most confident about was tell Rachel you saved her. That's like the one to me that felt like, Unless you're going to save it for final tribal council, what good does it do you? Because I don't think that necessarily saving Rachel was the best strategic decision for Saul in that situation. I don't think it was a bad decision. I also don't think it was the best decision, right? Because I think on one hand, you get rid of Rachel, you help to solidify this group of six. Right. Okay, great. That's one option. The other option is you choose to save Rachel. Now she's potentially indebted to you. And then you keep the group of Gata together as four strong, but then you have Andy turning on them. So maybe it creates more interesting dynamics. And then Tuku, you know, starts to fall apart. Like to me, there didn't seem to be a really clear outcome for him in terms of who he should give it to. But I do think he should tell Rachel. I think if it was me, I would have given it to Rachel and I would have my inclination would have been to tell her. I think th- thinking about it, I think the better move is give it to Rachel and don't tell her. I think it's it's a good move to go up to her after the fact and say, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're safe. That was awesome. Let's work together. I think that's good. I think the the disadvantage is if you're not going to tell everyone you went on the reward with, I think it's risky to tell Rachel because I think Rachel could tell them. Now, maybe you wait it out. Maybe you wait for a little while, see if you become close with her, That's build a bond, yeah. build her some boats, and then tell her. You don't necessarily need to save it till final tribal. But I think that if you're going to keep it a secret from anyone, you should keep it a secret from everyone because it benefits him to have 
as long as Rachel is someone he wants to work with and that he plans on building a relationship with, mm -hmm. it benefits him to have Rachel here. Um, it, I think the obvious thing to do is to tell her, which is like probably what my first instinct would have been, but I wouldn't have been thinking about the disadvantages to that. It's kind of like the more things you do in Survivor, there are pros and cons. You think, oh, pro, I'm going to get her on my side. Con, what if she thinks that now I'm a threat? because I, I mm -hmm. right. know, she owes right. me, right? Whereas not telling her doesn't give you a pro, but it doesn't give you a con either. Yeah. And if you do make it to the end, you could at least add, be a final travel thing to just say, hey, I did this thing that everyone witnessed. Right. And so, you know, well, you could do that. I think that's the thing is if he's willing, okay, so if, so in my head, you're telling Rachel because you want to create a strong relationship with her. Yes. If he's keeping Rachel to continue to throw Rachel to the wolves, <laughs> Then that obviously don't tell. Oh her, no, right? well, yeah, because then you're just toying with her, right? If you're like, yeah. "Hey, I saved you once. I'm not going to save you again." I don't bye think bye. that would just like. I guess maybe apparently making the jury is a huge deal to Survivor players, but I don't think Rachel would be like, "Thanks for helping me make the jury, Saul. I really appreciate yeah. that." One. And then voting me out the next week. Thanks. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it, yeah, it's only a situation where you really care about fostering that relationship. But if it's to continue to let Andy throw God under the bus, then like, no, don't. And, and and it's tough because I would imagine that Saul has to have some sort of relationship with Rachel at this point. I mean, I know they've only been merged for a couple days, but like, I, I think he has to have some sort of idea in his head of like, they're having something going, which is why he wants to do this. Because to your point, Mary, the huge downside about this is great new person to build a bond with. But if I tell her, I don't know who she's going to tell, like there's mm -hmm. a fair chance she's going to tell at least a couple of other people. And then that's going to spread to a bunch of other people. And then, before you know it, hey, guess what? Mr. Saul found an advantage with that, uh, behind everybody's back and like led to this big move at Tribal Council. Let's get rid of him. But I will say this discussion here goes to show why, in my opinion, this was by far the best part of the episode. Like, It is very interesting to me that Survivor has not done more anonymous advantages. It's basically this and the legacy advantage, mm -hmm. uh, where it's like, oh, I don't know who gave this thing to me, but... I have it now. I know like Australian Survivor, for instance, did an instance of it where somebody could play an idol on somebody like at the voting booth anonymously. Um, and I just think it's such an interesting idea because there is the duality now of not only am I playing this idol for someone, but also, okay, who's going to own the move mm -hmm. when I get back to camp? But it's also funny because Survivor has been trending away from that. We see it with the amulets. We see it with the journeys where everybody's like, okay, you have something. So, okay, sure. It's not in the sense that you're saying where you're like playing it anonymously. They're like trending towards everyone knows everything. So I think that's also why it was really refreshing to see Saul not tell anybody because you got to see his acting at tribal council, but also we've seen so many negative consequences of telling people about advantages. And he just was like, mm-mm, I'm -mm, shutting up now we'll see ultimately if he does end up telling people later but at least based on his initial behavior it seems like he wants to try to keep it under the rug also i'm sure that it was mentioned the last week but like jeff you know the amulets have consequences why were we acting like, oh i thought the amulets were great no just say <laughs> yeah that's the point of the amulets the point is that they have some consequences now at the point where all of the players collectively decide to break the consequences yeah maybe you need to rethink your a horrible trash advantage but like yeah. <laughs> i mean do we think this was a, a direct rebuke of rome sitting down and calling out how the an amulets were a disadvantage like all right I'm going to show you all. I'm going to throw a bunch of twists your way. <laughs> and so one of them has to be good, right, Saul? <laughs> I mean, I think the best thing about an advantage in Survivor is being able to have power over the game to do what you want with it mm. without getting any heat for it. And so, yeah, an anonymous advantage. It's why half the people who find idols, like they say, the reason that people say, oh, I'm going to keep this a secret is because it is a good idea to keep it a secret. No one ever does it, but like, it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I think on principle, I can understand where they're coming from that if you're going to get a benefit in the game, it has to come at some kind of cost, right? So if you're going to get the dangerous ability, fun, Liana. I know exactly. We love dangerous fun. That's why it says beware. And, <laughs> right. So if you're going to beware, all right, 
that's fine, but it's almost the level of the risk that is now starting to outweigh the reward. And I think that's why we're seeing this pendulum shift in the way that players are treating advantages where the risk is so high that people aren't willing to do it, right? We see it with the boxes where yeah. two of the three decided, nope, that's enough. One and we're out. Even if I mean, they chose all, to take I it. I mean, yeah, all three decided to nope out before they reached yeah. the final stage. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same thing with the amulets. Okay, let's just get rid of them. Let's just burn them because why the, the risk does not outweigh the reward. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree with that. And so again, it's interesting that they present this. I don't know if they were thinking this necessarily when they put it in from what Jeff talked about with on fire, this really was sort of like a two piece plan where they had decided to do this split again, which I'm not entirely sure why when you're looking back on new era seasons, they decided like survivor 44 was the, the, the bees knees of places to go back to between like the journey where you can't sacrifice your vote. Your vote's basically gone. Get your vote back versus Again, the Matt Blankenship Memorial. Okay, half of you aren't going to vote, but one of you is going to win a reward that's basically going to go help the other side, which, I mean, I, I suffice to say, I was not very happy to see this back. No matter who went, I felt it was, like we just talked about it, it felt just rather reasonless to bring this I, But I think it's semantics. Like, I like the the split. Uh, one tribe wins and, and the other tribe votes i like that i just think you need to stop saying that they made the merge first just like don't say that just say hey you're on swap. yeah it's just hey we're doing it at the end of the at the end of the three tribe format we go to a true two tribe format yeah. for one yeah. vote or two votes or whatever yeah. and then we yeah. go to this like that's the problem the problem is the fact that you've claimed that they've made the merge but then the point of the merge is that everyone then gets to vote like yeah. together and that you have all these new people to deal with so i think i think that's the problem it's just like if you if they didn't structure it this way if they just moved it back one vote it wouldn't be that big of a deal but that's the thing mary is that i don't know if the show necessarily wants to look at the merge anymore the first couple rounds as everybody voting together i mean i did some research here and you know there are a few seasons if you look at every new era season there are a couple that do like the first two post-merge rounds are both twisty whether it be like mergatory and then immediately splitting some have one in one this was the first one to like uh, obviously not have mergatory proper but then have a twist involved and i do wonder from a production perspective if it's as simple as looking at the rome vote for instance and being like we don't want big you know near unanimous votes at the start we don't want the prevailing gameplay to be like everyone jump on a target instead we want to scatter all these factions to the nines and so let's throw a little bit more randomness to, to begin with, shake it up so that nobody settles into a pattern to begin with. I don't think that's optimal to do, considering that we've had 40 seasons where it's gone okay. But after watching it now for seven seasons, I'm pretty sure that's their prerogative at this point. But the, also, like, and I know it's a one-off thing, but, like, this isn't just a new school thing. I mean, this happened in Survivor Fiji. Like, it's not, it, it yeah, it wasn't great there. Everyone didn't like it at that <laughs> time either. But, like, it's, it's more than they they just reached back into the well. And I think I think you're right, Mike. I think it's like it's a, a status of they don't want it to be this, you know, cohesive thing at the merge. I would say the, the flaw in that is if you're not going to do tribe swaps earlier on, then people just don't have the time to build the relationships that I was talking about are important to make this not feel like someone's getting screwed over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, except exactly. that's not really happen what happened this time. But like, yeah, it would have been yeah. if Rachel wasn't safe. I think, I think maybe this episode and combined with last week's episode as well, it feels a little bit like that scene in Parks and Recreation where there's the influencer that's talking about beef milk and it's like almond milk that's been squeezed through the holes in cow and living cows or something like yeah, it's that. It's all about rebranding. Yeah. It's all about rebranding that we're just getting the same thing. And then this was just a tribe swap and Rachel got swap screwed, but then there was a twist. So she got saved. Like, that's just what it was. We just, we just had a little itty bitty tribe swap just for like a day, just for like funsies. And now we're going to go back to, I assume regular merge. Uh, but yeah, it is. I agree with you, Mary, that it does feel a little bit like semantics of just how you're defining what's going on and what we call it. And uh, I lost my train of thought because I was thinking about the whole beef milk thing that you, <laughs> you're just talking about. 
Do you think if Jeff offered that as a luxury on the reward, would people be like vociferously disgusted or would they eventually put two and two together? I don't know, man. Oh, I I remember what I was going to say. Do you think that this would change at all, would make you feel better if um, everyone who is on the viewing group, who's just watching, if they have complete um, free reign to play advantages on the people who are there? Like I thought you meant like the free range oh. to just walk around tribal oh. council if they wanted like to. Like no. I, I would also say, I mean, this is this would also be like I don't think this is what they want because it's basically mergatory. But I think like also they could you could change it so that they have the ability to also talk and mm-hmm. be in the tribal conversation. And Matt Blankenship could have gotten his bag <laughs> if that had been allowed. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it's it's interesting looking at it from this perspective because there's pretty much nothing else besides Saul's advantage. Like Sue has an idol and. I don't know, maybe if she feels like she or someone else is in danger when Rachel gets uh, noped out of the the tribe that she would play. But otherwise, like, yeah, if Sam had an idol right now, it would have been really nice to play on Rachel, but mm-hmm. he wouldn't have anything. It is interesting. Like, I don't, I don't think I'd be too mad at it. Like, the toothpaste has kind of already been out of the tube of both times we've done this, one person on the other side has been able to have an influence over what's going on in the tribal council. So for me, it's like, yeah, sure. Yeah, give give someone your extra vote to use at tribal council. Play an idol on them. Uh, hell, everyone pull your shots in the dark and give it to one person so they can just start playing them one right after the other. One of them's got a hit. <gasps> Is that allowed? Can yeah. you That's play someone cool. else's? Oh, because no. yeah, it's like your vote. Is like I, I'm pretty. I'm vote. pretty sure the rule is that you can't play someone else's shot in the dark. You can't accumulate Bro. them. That'd be so cool. Imagine going up to Jeff essentially with your lottery tickets of like, I'd like to play the can, scratch this one. Can we scratch yeah. this one? Can we scratch this one? Like maybe I'll win the lottery because you got everybody's shot in the dark. So. That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you have six shots in the dark, I guess the question is like, would you put one in, draw a scroll and then they have to reset? Or is it like, listen, if I play six shots in the dark, I'm a winner every time. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Um, like, but couldn't can you can't play someone else's shot in the dark? I'm pretty sure not. Like there was the whole thing, obviously, of Andy offering his up as collateral, yeah, exactly. Emily's as well. But that seems more spiritual than anything. It was more so to represent like I am giving away my get out of jail free card, possibly, or I guess like one sixth of a chance of getting out mm-hmm. of jail free, which does sound like a statement on the American penal system. Uh, but mm-hmm. basically this idea of like, well, listen, I'm not going to play it because it's out of my hands. More so like, okay, I'm giving you an advantage to you. To play. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's start getting into our unfortunate boot for this week in the form of Tiana. I mean, I got to start with how she went out here because, oh man, palpable. And it's interesting because like, she was obviously not crying for her own funeral. She's told me and other people that she was still surprised by the outcome. She thought it would still be a pretty big vote on to Gabe, but like, she's still crying her way through there's that image of the other four whispering to themselves while she's just sitting there with her head in her hands and so it seemed like we knew what was coming obviously much earlier than she did and oh the look that she gave on the way out i don't know like was it anger was it sadness was it obviously a mixture of everything because this has been a season for people walking out of tribal council after their boot with uh quite a reaction to them which i think is great by the way oh, yeah. oh like, yeah i i think that while it's it's nice to while it's while it is just a game and it's nice to um eventually move past the things that happened in the game in the moment i want people to not just show their real emotion but i think that we should encourage the turning back to the group and being like calling someone out or putting a target on someone or just being upset or whatever, because, because yeah, there's, there's real feelings involved and you should be able to do that. Like I, it's like what I hate when, when anyone gets voted off of a a show, particularly big brother, they do it all the time. And then they come out and they're just like, Oh no, no, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. It's like, don't just admit that you were blindsided and be honest with this. And so, yeah, I just want people, I don't want them to just turn and and say, Oh, great game. Good job, everyone. Oh, you got me. No. (laughs) Not well, I, I I think especially for Tiana as well, a lot of that intense emotion I'm sure comes from the rug being pulled out from under her when it came to Rachel, just 
absconding back to camp. That's right. She <laughs> yeah, mentally prepared herself like, I'm going to make the jury and not so fast. Here comes exactly. something. And, and also in the blink of an eye, you're gone as well. You walked into tribal council thinking you were safe and now you're not, which again is the textbook definition of a blind side. But this one involved a couple of extra steps to it. Well, and she says, I mean, as soon as it happens, you almost, I, I completely empathize where you're just overwhelmed with what's happening because you go into tribal council. Of course, you're going to be nervous. And then essentially the plan is no plan. There's no plan. And you see her just sort of babble for a bit and then say, okay, I'm getting up. <laughs> and I, I totally understand doing that in that moment. So I think that she was not only blindsided, but also blindsided by Rachel leaving. So it was almost yeah. like a double blindside. So you're not only processing the emotions of your own ouster, but you're also processing the emotions of, well, how the hell did we even get here in the first place? It's a double blindside where both the sides are cut off and basically like it's driving in a snowstorm where you're like, <laughs> all right, I hope it don't crash into anything, but good luck, I suppose. I mean, even Caroline, I don't know if she was playing it up, but- even she had to like swim through word soup to try to answer one of Jeff's questions being like, ah, uh, there's a lot on my mind right now. I mean, she was clearly very emotional when Tiana left. So I think maybe it was her kind of like mentally preparing for what was able to happen. But I totally agree with Mary. People let your emotions out. Just let it go. Let fly. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if we need to get as meta as like making this a drag race exit line where now like everyone has to come up with something. But if there's something in the moment, let, let it well, flower. And I don't know about, I don't know about everyone else, but at least for myself as someone who has wanted to go on Survivor for years and years and years, I did, I have always thought in my head about like, well, what's my, what's my vote outline going to yeah. be? Like, what am I, yeah, what am yeah. I going to say? Yeah, but get, what, do you, have you given smell. that, what have you landed on? Oh, I don't want to give it away. In case yeah, you can't I still yeah, get an opportunity that. to use yeah, it. But I have thought about it, and I have, I have thought, and and I will say, uh, it probably would end up being different in the moment because my instinct, which is probably what a lot of people have, is to be like, "Don't let them show how much this hurt you. Make it funny. Make it, you know, make it cheerful. Yeah. Make it lighthearted." But that's oh, why when so I'm going to do a Robert De Niro it. impression, I crack the code. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> no, I could never. Oh, oh um, no! Yeah. But but you know. You don't want to be cringy. That's just that's just rough. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do love the idea of Tiana though, like leaving camp and like Miss Tiana, yeah, Miss Tiana, like doing the Miss best Vanjie impression. <laughs> Tiana just like sobbing. Yo, that's what she did. She did the Pangina heels elimination, for, where she's just like walking out crying, and they just keep the crying in as the. Oh sound yeah, these, these are some brutal. good comparisons. Like I think Annika was like the Jimbo, basically screaming like. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah well that'll be off-season podcast we'll do all the <laughs> all the comparisons to to drag queen walk off lines but yeah. um basically yeah. all of survivor 44s ginger binges they got me girls they got me gals yeah right <laughs> i mean it would be very interesting if that's how listen cbs viacom merger is happening it's only inevitable that we're going to start crossing the streams here i mean it would be very interesting if we do get a drag queen even from an amateur perspective a local perspective on the show because i feel like they'd just be conditioned to give an exit line and a soundbite on the way out i know right imagine like selena's titties on there she knows what to do come on girl give us the line <laughs> oh boy well that being said how far did we think tiana was going to walk down the metaphoric <laughs> runway i guess from both a uh you know drag race perspective as well as a airplane perspective liana did you have sky high prospects for our hawaiian yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. It's bad. It's bad. It's real. It's real, real bad. Look, I listened to her interview and I was like, "This is my new best friend." <laughs> like, I just really, really enjoyed her interview. Uh, so yeah, I had her as my winner. <clears throat> oh, Liana. She's my winner pick. I know. Well, also Tiana, Liana, I felt like, come on, let's get some. You did, you did pick Liana from here. 41. So this was the next best thing. Yes, exactly. In the same way I picked Gabler. Gabe was the next best thing. Like, you know, there's a lot of synergy here. It's my previous picks. So anyway, let's just rip the bandaid off and get this over with. I said that Tiana soared through the game, <laughs> taking her relationships to new heights. It's a lot of really bad puns. She formed a particularly tight bond with Gabe, whose flashy antics and emulation of Russell Hans rubbed people the wrong way. Making this connection allowed Tiana to fly further, taking credit for Gabe's moves in the final tribal council while not catching any of the flack. 
Her preseason conditioning of grip strength and core strength paid off as she secured three individual immunities. Her ally was Gabe. Her enemy was Teeny. And then I wrote a few. I think these are, I don't know if I was meant to include these, but I'm going to read them anyway. Uh -huh. I wrote, she made this game unfly gettable. <laughs> <laughs> And then I said, Tiana lifted everyone's spirits. That one's fine. And then the last one is garbage. I'm nacho average flight attendant. What does that have to do with it? I don't nachos. know, Mary. I don't know. Where, well, Liana, you have a great altitude <sighs> about all this. Did she, <laughs> did she fly on Spirit Airlines? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Mary. A lifted, I think, was maybe supposed to be the joke there. I, I don't. I don't okay. know. This I is like don't remembering know. I'm still what not I did sure about ago. the nachos that are going on here. Yeah, uh, did you assume she... there'd be some sort of like mountain of gross nachos reward and she say, I'm nacho typical flight attendant? <laughs> I'm nacho average flight attendant. <laughs> yeah, that one's not really a flight pun. That's just bad. <laughs> That's nothing. It's <laughs> just a pun on nacho. <laughs> I'm really hopeful that you go through all the rest of these and like, Gabe, I'm not show average talk show host. Well, now I'm going to have to just continue to include Yeah, it's like using everyone. six shots in the dark, right? Like one of them's going to hit. Well, one of them will make sense. One Did you do this for everyone? Have you done this for the past several people? No. no. Just Tiana, apparently. It was the, I mean, she made this game unfly gettable. Like, that she did. Was, uh, that, that was, was good. Top. That was my easily. But that, maybe that's like, I'm just trying to remember, okay, what was I thinking in that moment? I probably wrote all these and was thinking, okay, figure out a way to include them. And then I never went back to do that. So then they just stayed there. Um, yeah. Wow. Unfly gettable. Some well, that was truly really an unfly gettable set of predictions. Uh, well, unfortunately, I am uh, Nacho Winnipeg, Tiana. <laughs> I had her aiming a bit lower. I did have her making the jury, okay. barely. I kind of had her making oh. that, like, uh -oh. Kelly, Tevin, like, 10th, 11th place slot. So I said, Tiana, uh, the perceptions of Tiana as a go-to person that her competition wanted to work with carries over upon her feet hitting the sand. She's caught in the middle of her first vote at Tuku, being the final nail in Gabe's coffin. Oh! Working, working tightly with TK, Tiana's laid-back Aloha spirit combined with Tuku's winning streak, making her one of the most purple players of the pre-merge. Mm. When she wins the first couple of individual challenges at the merge, the yeah. online populace will remark that she is the latest purple queen, calling her, quote, Chelsea Goes Hawaiian. <laughs> like Chelsea like, from Ghost from Island? Ghost Island? <laughs> Chelsea goes Hawaiian. Chelsea goes styling. <laughs> you know, like with the Brady Punch goes Hawaiian, I guess. That's bad. I love Unfortunately, it. Unfortunately, once the jury hits, okay, Miss Unfly Gettable, okay? Don't throw those <laughs> stones, your glass houses and smithereens beneath you. Fortunately, once the jury hits without her closest ally, TK, by her side, she's mm. deemed too big of a threat when left vulnerable. So she's taken out by a surprising consensus. Her closest ally was TK. Her enemy was the editors. Ah, uh, yes. Interesting. Yeah. Um, <sighs> well, that's, that's a close one, Mary. A, re a real close decision. You're going to have to think about it long, <laughs> long and hard. Yeah, unfortunately, while I do feel like uh, some of the positive attributes that, that Liana put out there uh, were were accurate, whereas like I don't I don't think she had any issues with the edit or anything, Mike. Um, I just can't give it to the winner. <laughs> Yeah. So, I'm gonna have to go Mike hey, here on this one. Listen, drop the two, keep the one. She was 12th place. That's basically a winner. I mean, yeah. Boom. She, she won the, the pre jury. She, she was, yeah, uh, well, she was the last person of the pre jury, which is right. essentially the winner of the pre jury. So mm -hmm. I think. That's a, that's like essentially the same thing. That you know sounds I mean? like something someone would say when I interview them afterwards. Like, well, I'm actually the winner of the pre-jury, so. <laughs> I'm surprised Rome did not say that. Because he knew there was one coming after him. He's like, ah, second place of the pre-jury. <laughs> Brutal. I do want to ask uh, because, all right, this will be a little bit of speculation. So if you want to skip ahead a little bit, people, but Tiana had a lot to say in my interview with her. And there's a lot to do about Sue. Much ado. Uh, oh. She had a lot to say about stuff with Sue that we did not see make the edit. Uh, particularly that apparently Sue early on was like having emotional breakdowns every day. 
and Tiana was going to comfort her. She had said that apparently to target TK, you see on the episode, Sue's like, yeah, I'm going to say anything to get Tiana to flip. Apparently that meant that Sue had said some like a quote below the belt things that attacked TK's character. And so it made Tiana uh, say, oh yeah, I'm a girl's girl. I'm more likely to support her than someone like TK if these like allegations are true. You know, for a while, given the George Costanza of it all, I thought that Andy might be set up to be our zero vote finalist. I think that might be Sue. Gabe, Caroline, Sue. Caroline wins. Gabe loses because of that comment he made. And Sue, apparently a hot mess, loses. Boom. Put put it, put it. That's unflaggable. I'm telling you. That's my Yikes. prediction. That's interesting. Um. Hmm. I mean, I think on the surface, I think Sue being a, a zero vote finalist makes sense, but I don't I don't actually see her getting to the finale. Ah. Oh, that could so, be interesting wow. as well. I mean, we'll see. Like, if she does pull a Carolyn and like play this idol when only now one other person in the game knows about it, like it could be something that makes a big impression and causes her to immediately get targeted, like we saw with Carolyn. Or it could be like a Xander situation where she never ends up needing to use the idol because nobody is targeting her because everyone feels like she's a goat. I just thought it was like an interesting thing to pick out. Yeah. Because, especially in the wake of all the red paint shenanigans that happened in the last episode. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because that, that's kind of two different things. Like knowing that does change my mind a little. I was actually thinking that she could end up more in the trying to remember. Is it Julie? uh mm -hmm. kind of yeah role. like the julie maria type of oh my god you're such a big threat at the final five yeah yeah sort of that zone of maybe not necessarily you're such a big threat but like oh people like you you know you know or or the or even one step further the sort of we don't want you to be the zero vote finalist kind of like we want you don't want you to take that spot thing but i i don't know i i don't really see her maybe it's because we have so many other kooky characters i don't see her being the like obvious obvious oh this is the goat to take to the end kind of thing the the typical zero vote finalist spot that you get from the older woman a lot i actually think that you know that role is being fought for by like 18 different people so <laughs> well i mean i think for next week if if the trend continues is sort of in the post merge the big targets seem to go at least in terms of the new era then I think the pecking order is probably like Sam Sierra, definitely on the chopping block. I would say Kyle, if he doesn't win individual immunity, is on the yeah. chopping block. Oh, so yeah. I, I think I think Sue is like taking a bite out of him, much like that bat one when it was still alive. The minute he does not win. They also like, I wouldn't say he won it by accident, but like I think he was clearly intending to win immunity for his whole group. And just because the rest of his group lost, he ends up kind of like unintentionally winning immunity for himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think I think Gabe is still has the opportunity to circle back to to being a target as well. And right. that's also something interesting as well. Going down, back to your point, Mary, of like, what are some things that Tiana could have done? I think there's a there's a chance that if somebody but Kyle wins immunity, that he goes instead of Tiana. And maybe it's because like Gabe is fiercely against Tiana because she kept throwing his name out. But even though Kyle had won one individual immunity at that point clear that sue was not very happy with him uh and there probably was this idea of like oh he'll flip on tuku immediately because he was left out of the tk vote which to your point leon i think puts him probably in uh the you know eyes of the rest of the tribe as an easy target going forward whether or not he'll be the final target remains to be seen but kyle i think unfortunately built a bit of like an untenable house for himself at this point that he's just trying to like lay a foundation for as soon as possible but you never know maybe once enough individual immunities and it kind of like goes away because people are just like i don't know kyle's still here i guess oh yeah kyle whatever <laughs> like there's just no individual immunity this season it's yeah, just the, the immunity kyle yeah it's a kyle that, well i mean also by the way i'm really upset that jeff has not used this yet but the immunity is back up for grabs. It's a bat. Immunity is bat up for grabs. I need to hear it. Okay. Uh, who do you think is the most safe at this point? Because I'm looking at some of these Lavo people being like, they look like they're chilling. Yeah. Well, I think it's like because... not collectively as a group. It's not like a Tika 3 thing. It's just like, they seem kind of cool. So I think the Lavo people, I think at least Genevieve and Teeny are good. Like, 
I think getting Rome off of their collective backs helped a lot because he was drawing a lot of attention to them as a foursome. Now they've kind of shown like, yeah, we're not as tight with each other. You heard about all the chaos that happened. And so now you have these more unified blocks coming into the merge, now starting to kind of like act upon these deep-seated grudges. The three people who are left really don't have that many grudges against each other. What? Genevieve told Rome that she didn't want to work with Saul moving forward. Like, that's pretty much it. Uh, and so I do think that they're probably the three safest. I think from what we've been led to believe, Andy is also in a good category just because yeah there's a chance he might get caught with his hand in the cookie jar and people are like oh wait a minute andy's trying to get rid of his tribe let's get rid of him but it feels like the perception of andy is so much that like he is this kind of you know uh this kind of like pet almost <laughs> not to like demean too much but like this guy that like everyone says oh yeah well he had the meltdown on day one so like we don't really expect him to do any huge major things and it comes at their peril as he talks about it's nursing a baby snake yeah you can have a connection all you want with it rupert but chances are that thing's still gonna bite you at the end of the day mm -hmm. andy's growth arc i think is gonna be really interesting once we see the eventual conclusion however it ends i think it's already been super interesting to see i mean especially with the annika tribal to then now go into all of this foreshadowing for him turning on the rest of gata very cool i love I, that storyline i love darth andy so much maybe it's just because i saw that him and his girlfriend dressed up as padme and anakin for halloween <laughs> but like it really does seem like like here's this kind of like hapless kid on tatooine and then these people step in to train him and then he's <laughs> able to succumb to the dark side and overcome them and defy his master now listen Hopefully no. it ends better for him than Anakin Skywalker at the end of the day. But I think it's it's a very fun turn as you're talking about Liana. Oh my gosh. He had not he killed not just the men, but the women and the yeah. children. He's super into pod racing. I'm actually I would love to see a Photoshop picture. <laughs> Andy Ken. Andy Ken, yes. Oh, Annie. Little Annie. Okay. Who's the Jar Jar Binks of this season? That's a good question. That is a good question. And you know, it depends. It depends what your thoughts on Jar Jar Binks are. <laughs> Polarizing character. Polarizing character. Gotta have some catchphrases, right? Who's oh, got the ooh, Misa... Wait, I have a guess. Oh, no. Who's, who's tall? Is it, is it a John John Binks, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Not John John Binks. I mean, Jar Jar loved... Anakin Skywalker, John Lovett. Of course, we know closest ally of Andy. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and politics. I believe Jar Jar Binks later on does get involved in politics. He becomes a senator. <laughs> yeah, becomes a senator, right? Yeah. Uh, the lore. The lore goes so deep. Oh, my god. Okay. Well, sp speaking of deep lore, <laughs> we're going to play a game. What's the name of the, is it Becca? Be Becca. Yeah, uh, Becca is the name Becca. of the tribe. Okay, great. So we're going to play a game called In the Background of Becca, <laughs> which is essentially inspired by a scene during the reward where I don't know if either of you noticed, but Saul is eating potato salad and he eats out of the communal big ass spoon that is too big for his mouth and he's sort of like trying to jam it in the corner of his mouth that is a don't cut that out and, <laughs> and I just and uh so yeah so he's just trying um, to get all that white stuff in his mouth liana what's the yeah, problem i know i know but i can relate so yeah so he um uh that was very funny to me so what i did is i went through the episode with a fine toothed comb and i tried to pick out all of the little details that i thought were funny or just amused me in some way might not be funny to you but they amused me so i realize in retrospect a great name for a fantasy like tribe name in a survivor draft would be fine tooth rome fine tooth rome yeah <laughs> no. the deep breath is just you <laughs> contemplating how do i couch this in the nicest way possible yeah exactly that's a great idea mike there are no bad ideas in it's not your average it's... draft name <laughs> right See, that's better. All right, Mike, we're going to go ahead and start with you. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to read the question and then I will give you four answers. You have to guess which one you think is correct. We're going to okay. cover a myriad of things in this episode. But first, we're going to start with Mike. This is to you. What does Rachel say when Jeff announces the split groups for immunity? Is it 
A, keeping us on our toes. B, another freaking twist. C, always twisting, Jeff. (laughs) Or D, twists on twists on twists. Gotta love it. (laughs) D sounds like something Jeff GPT wrote of like... (laughs) It was like if a contestant could say this after I reveal a twist, That's what, yeah, that it's like, would be great. Listen, everybody, stop saying my twists suck. You should be saying twists on twists on twists. Twist. Jeff, I just it. can't get enough. Can't All get right, it. so it's tough because A and B are more typical, but like I'm trying to meta this now. Of did you? Is it actually C? And you picked it because it stuck out to you, right? Like C is by far the weirdest choice, which is like what? Just keep twisting, Jeff. Always twisting, Jeff. Oofa doofa. You know, like Mary had described earlier, I am not going to go with the riskier pro-con choice to start this out. At least I'll go with a safer option here. So we've got A and B. Can you read those options out again? Keeping us on our toes. Another freaking twist. That was A and B, respectively. I'm going to go with... A, I don't know about the potty mouth on Rachel here, especially in front of Jeffrey Probst. Frickin'? Is that a freaking? Is that, is that a... All right. Well, I can tell you, Mike, you're keeping us on our toes, but it was C. Oh, oh I, knew I knew it! I knew it! Jeff. <laughs> that stood out to me when I was watching the episode. I like, oh, I like that. Always Jeff twisted, always be Jeff. twisted. Always yeah. twisted. Twist those twists. All right, Mary, let's see if your luck can help here. Question number two. What does Sierra say at the reward feast, causing Saul to clap for their accomplishments? <laughs> Is it A, nothing left, B, no more corn, C, not a potato in sight, or D, bones? <laughs> See, I really hope it's not a potato in sight. I don't, I don't think it is, but I do love that. Not a potato. Maybe Sierra's just quoting her favorite, like Irish settler, circa 1473. (laughs) She's a big fan of the famine. You know what I mean? Well, listen, survivors like a 26 day famine. If you think about it, (laughs) and you were just talking about Saul shoveling potato salad. Um, I, I'm gonna go with with no more corn or whatever the corn one was. Yeah, no more corn. Ah, but no more right answers, Mary. I'm sorry. It was bones. <laughs> and she says it twice, actually. What? What, Sierra? What's with your bone like, love of bones? bones? Well, I think it was because the baby back ribs, they cleared all the meat from the baby back ribs, leaving only <clears throat> bones. So, that's so not she, like... this was just like a clean plate club. Like, look yeah. at us. Yeah. Okay. Bones. But like, or maybe she's just shouting out her favorite Fox procedural and she's trying to get like, oh, Emily Deschanel, I know you're watching. Of course, Liana, your favorite, David Boreanaz. David Boreanaz, we love, we stand. Bones! Bones! <laughs> Next week, she's going to be like, Matlock. I can't wait. All right. <clears throat> Mike, we're going back to you. We're all tied up. Zero, zero. <laughs> At the immunity challenge, after the groups are split, each castaway is given a band to signify their group, yellow or blue. Where is Sue wearing her blue band? Oh, no. (laughs) Is it A, tied as a hairband? B, tied as a headband? C, tied around her upper arm? Or D, tied around her wrist? Oh, okay. I would imagine she wouldn't put it around her arm because the entire competition is to hold it above your head. But then why would she put it as a hair? Actually, you know what? I'm going to say she put it as a hairband. I think that's next level thinking on Sue's part. (laughs) Okay, wow. Next level thinking from Sue and next level thinking from Mike. Yes, that was correct. So all of these options, someone had done. So Mm. Andy had it as a headband. A couple people, including Kyle, had it as their upper arm tied here. And then a couple people, I believe Sam, had it tied around their wrist. So these were all options that others had chosen. But Mike, you nailed it for Sue. I mean, I think it's a good idea. It's natural cushioning, right? That's why uh, Spencer, I remember in Kagayan, ended up winning that challenge where you hold, or tried to win the challenge where you hold the block on your head because he had that ah. hair. So no, it was actually tied in the back. It was like oh. her, with her hair in the back. It wasn't like this, which is actually what I expected more people to do. And I don't yeah. know if there was like a rule against it because Andy's was like this and his was the closest. But I, though I immediately thought, put uh, some sort of smushy cushion there to protect your head. 
How's your Smushy head? cushion. Smushy cushion. All right, Mary, we're going to go back to you. We're sticking with the clothing items. Ooh. What pattern was on Rachel's socks this episode? Oh, it was twist? it <laughs> twists just keep on coming? Was it A chevron, <laughs> B houndstooth, C puzzle pieces, or D smiley faces? It was I'm not looking at people's confessions. socks unless they've got this son's face on them. <laughs> All right, Mary, good. You passed the first test. Yes. We know you're not part of a certain section of the internet. Uh, let's go puzzle pieces. It's all yeah. tied up, Mary. That yeah, is it was correct. Puzzle. Yeah, I remember. I remember that. She, I remember that from like her pregame stuff. She was wearing mostly just. Piece I have socks with puzzle pieces, mm -hmm. so I thought it was most likely. <laughs> Which also, you know, her and Annika were the ones that were clutch on the puzzle. So I love that, that that's yeah, what her out. socks were. Actually, I do think that's a bad decision, though, for Survivor. You don't yeah, I was going to say, should you wear the opposite? Advertise it. Yeah, you yeah. should wear, like, um, I don't know, like, an I'm with stupid sock pointing up to yourself to be like, mm. I'm not good at puzzles. Do they <laughs> make I'm with stupid socks? <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> do but I, what if they're puzzle pieces, but they're just not put together correctly? <laughs> like, you couldn't solve the puzzle. Is that is that allowed? Oh, that's a okay. good question. Yeah, if it's like an unsolved, like listen, listen, my socks, they my feet can't solve it. a puzzle. My, what do you think my hands could? Yep. Uh, yes, they absolutely have. I'm with stupid socks. So if anyone, <laughs> any right, future well, survivor players are interested, this is the next level strategy. I've got an idea for a stocking stuffer. <laughs> all right, we're all tied up, Mike. We're going back to you. Back to the quotes. So to set the scene, Andy and Genevieve were talking on the beach in the morning. How does Genevieve reply to Andy after he says, I'm excited for what we could do, the possibilities? Does she say, A, yes. B, yes, yes, yes. C, yes, 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 yes. Or D, yes, 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 yes. Okay, can you give me just the count of yeses here? One, three, four, five. Oh, this is impossible. <laughs> I have to figure out what's the <laughs> weirdest I'm number of yes or question. Enough attention. <laughs> okay. God damn it. <laughs> All right. So I have to figure out how many times. So it's between three and five. Like, it's not going to be that Genevieve just says yes. And that's it. It's It's got to be either yes, 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 yes. Or yes, pause. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Five. Why not? <laughs> well, I can tell you, Mike. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. It is five yeses. I don't know how you got that. That's amazing. I'm very impressed. Very impressed. Press, press, press. Very press, 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 press. All right, Mary. I, I also love that. It's like, was Genevieve trying to figure out something to say to follow it up? And all that came out of her mouth was yes. And it was specifically yes. Yes, 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 yes. That was the delivery as well. For so it was emphasis. like a yes, think of something to say, can't think of anything to say, just say yes a bunch of times. <laughs> Mary, we're going back to you. What does Teeny say when the reward group is playing baseball after their feast slash nap? Bones! Right. Bones! <laughs> does Teeny say, hey, bada bada? <laughs> Is that A? B, no foul balls over here. C, as Jeff says, check your ball. Or D, <laughs> hit it so hard. <laughs> Do you like me to reread? The uh, no, I, I'm good. <laughs> you know what? I've been sticking with it every single guess. I'm going back to see. Jeff said, check your balls. Check your balls. I wish, <laughs> I wish, wish, wish Teeny had said that. Uh, Jeff oh, did man. say, check your ball um, in the immunity challenge, which I do see, think it's testicular familiar. cancer. So, you know, definitely check your balls. Mm. Uh, but no, it was no foul balls over here. <laughs> it was the Teeny Teeny, quote. get better lines. <sighs> I mean, check your balls, man. Now. We are down to our final two questions. Mary, you're not out of this yet, but if Mike gets this one correct, 
then we're playing for funsies. In the cooler or the deep freeze, as Jeff likes Mm, to say, to really humiliate a group. Now, we are going to a visual uh, clue thing for this. So I have prepared, I'm going to read you the question, but your options are going to be shown as images. So Mike, we're going to go back to you and I will do my best to describe these images for those who are listening in the audio only. Okay. So question number seven, and Mike, I've shared the screen mm-hmm. if you'd like yep. to add it. Mike, this is for you. What emoji best represents Sam's face when Jeff announces there will be potato salad at the reward feast? Is it A, the shocked face emoji, B, the smiling emoji mouth open C, the tongue out emoji, or D, the smiling winking emoji? Okay, it's got to be C or D, because those are two of the oddest expressions you could ever have besides outright crying at the idea of potato salad. So (laughs) either Sam is panting like a dog, or he's like, I don't know, trying to hint at some sort of romantic affair with potato salad, one of the rare foods he's eaten in his life up to this point, coming to Survivor. (laughs) So I am going to go with... Oh man, I I think it's gonna be C. I think Sam and his floppy tongue is what stuck out to you, much like his uh, vestige here. <laughs> well, Sam's floppy tongue, while sometimes on my mind, was not the correct answer. It was the shocked face emoji. Now, obviously, this is open for interpretation, but I do believe of the ones I chose. Where's that tongue? <laughs> the mo- see, no tongue. It's it's in there. There's very little teeth. <laughs> There's no wink. <laughs> so I was like, what's your technique? <laughs> I know. Uh, uh. Uh, all right. So, Mary, you're still in this. If you get this one correct, we're going to a tiebreaker, which I have not prepared for, but we'll figure something out. Now, you can probably guess your question is very similar. What emoji best represents Jeff's face right after Rachel leaves tribal and heads back to camp? So it's right when they resume, <laughs> right when they resume the tribal council. Man, I hope it's A. <laughs> I hope it's B. <laughs> I was like, I, you so, did it. <laughs> a. So to describe the emojis, uh, option A is the sort of smirking side eye emoji. B is the smiling hands up, like hug emoji thing, or maybe inappropriate touching emoji. C is the eyebrow raised emoji. And D is the hmm, pondering <clears throat> emoji with your hand on your chin. Hmm. All right. Here's, here's where I'm at. Um, I've, I've, guest C every single time, <laughs> but also <laughs> coincidentally, it wasn't a strategy. It just happened. But also I feel like I have noticed in the past with Jeff that kind of, no matter what most people do, he does like at tribal, he does do the eyebrow raise emo- like mm-hmm. quite a lot. Like, mm, wonder what's going to happen now. So I'm going to go with C. Okay. You're going to go with C. So unfortunately I had chosen <laughs> D, the <laughs> sort of pondering emoji uh hands on is he asking now what as the caption show yep (laughs) and that was actually why this stood out to me as well because i love the idea of rachel leaves and then jeff's like so now what (laughs) now yeah fair enough um (laughs) all right well well earned mike my strategy my c strategy didn't work (laughs) why shouldn't she have done like what the rizzler does and do like the checking the jawline like the kids do nowadays in tiktok not the rizzler yeah jeff is a huge rizzler fan he's a big rizzler fan yeah Uh uh-huh he's totally up with the uh ohio skibbity riz or whatever you say (laughs) is that accurate i don't know well congratulations mike a score of two to one you have successfully won but mary you put in a valiant effort and you were close on a lot of these so congratulations all Liana, you're going to have to come up with a game later on next season of just all expressions using emojis because that was fire emoji. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I did have a couple other options. <laughs> so I, I think it's possible. I think we can definitely do it. We'll keep it keep it in the whole brain tank. Well, this podcast has me feeling quite smiling emoji, but a tear is falling on this yellow face as uh, it is time to go. But first, of course, we like to spend the end of every b and by giving our guests the opportunity to plug a charity or cause that is important to them. Highlight it for the listeners out there. Mary, what do you got? So um, 
My friend's father is currently uh, suffering from primary sclerosing cholangitis, uh, which is a liver disease along with bile duct cancer um, combined are not a great situation. And so um, it was something that I had not uh, heard of that, that liver disease um, for until he had it. So I wanted to shout out uh, PSC Partners Seeking a Cure. So you can go to pscpartners.org and um, donate there if you're interested or so inclined. Um, and at the very least, I would also recommend um, going to uh, the YouTube channel Eric Kidwell, where he is documenting his journey um, here going through this and kind of talking a lot about uh, different cancer treatments, as well as uh, healthcare in the U.S., um, et cetera. So it's a great educational um, way to kind of support him as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for for bringing that up. Uh, and I guess I'll, I'll add a, a sort of charity or cause, I guess, to the end of this as well. Of course, we are talking again on the eve of Election Day 2024 uh, for those who have not voted yet and live in the United States. We saw this very episode, what happens when people uh, are unfortunately not able to vote, outcomes that maybe do not go certain people's ways end up occurring. So please let your voice be heard. We say it all the time in the new era, your vote is your voice. We all have the right to vote. So please utilize it. Look for your local polling place, contact all your friends and family members, make sure that you have a voting plan. You got to have a plan on Survivor as well. And uh, it is time to vote in a manner of speaking. It is time to go but mary thank you so much for coming on thank you so much for binging the past month of survivor 47 in anticipation for this this was it was great a, yeah this was a lot of fun uh and i know you are also did you just wrap up your coverage of love is blind season seven yes. or is there still more to do no, uh, Love is Blind season seven is done. However, if anyone would like to go back and binge that, you can binge that as well as um, all of the episodes that we covered over on um, the Love at First Sight feed of RHAP, uh, myself, along with Asia and uh, Jason Reed. So if you uh, need a little more Asia in your life, you can go get it over there. <laughs> Don't we all? Uh, what would you recommend this season? How did it stack up? Uh, this is the season that so far geographically has been closest to where I live. So that was fun and interesting. Um, <laughs> look, it, you know, it was an interesting journey for myself who did apply to the season to be like, all right, who would I miss out on? Or, or be like, um, oh you know, gosh. did I dodge a bullet? And I think I think the answer to that was, yes, I dodged a lot of bullets. <laughs> so oh, my God. Good, good, good. So, yeah, um, it was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Liana, what's happening with you? Uh, did you have a, any dreams about applying for The Masked Singer and you just look on stage being like, if only I could have been one of them? If only that was me. No, I've seen the costumes this season. There's one called Goo. You know, I think I really dodged a bullet there. Uh, no, we're big. We're big Goo fans in this household. Uh, but we actually did take a break from The Masked Singer, not by choice. Baseball gave us a week off, but we're back, baby. This week is going to be the finale of Group B, so Hui and I are really excited to dig into everything Mass Singer. All right, uh, and of course, you can check out at Leon RHAP, you can check out at Frail Mary, at a Mike Bloom type. Check out my conversation with Tiana. It was a really great one where she was very open as she was on the way out about her feelings towards everything. Uh, again, I mentioned some of the little tidbits she gave about Sue. There was a lot to crack open there, a veritable archipelago of opinions when it comes to Tiana. I had a great time getting a chat with her. Over on the scripted TV side of things, I'm doing TV for real. I'm doing Battlestar Galactica. I'm doing The Penguin as well, which is finishing up. So check that all out if you are so inclined. Or just stick around for the BNB &B as we'll be back. The jury is here. Seems like, you know, we're relatively home free with twists from here on out. So it'll be very interesting to see what exactly happens there were a lot of plans put in motion again before things ended up getting divided a bit at the beginning of this episode and we'll see if we just hit unpause on that or if this tiana boot if uh tuku perhaps being a little bit more fractured being going into this situation being to four instead of five will affect anything no matter what we are going to have a first juror and we're going to be breaking it all down with another guest of course send us any game ideas you have do not be shy we are open to anything and everything rhapbnb at gmail.com and hashtag rhapbnb. Let me amend to that. We're open to everything except for Saul sticking the entire communal mashed potato spoon <laughs> in his mouth. 
I like to think of it as at the end when it was just sort of the bitter dregs that everyone else had already sort of gotten their serving of potato salad because otherwise that's so disappointing. Did this come before or after Bones? <laughs> this was before Bones. Bones! Bones! And she says it twice. And then Saul claps for Bones. He's like, yes, but I love that TV show. I love Bones. All right, well, we are going to unearth another episode of the B&B, also known as Bones and Bones, Bones in honor of the two times Sierra said it next week, where Leon and I will be joined by another guest breaking down Survivor with some fun and games. Thank you all so much again for listening. Thank you to everyone behind the scenes at RHAP for packaging this podcast for everyone's eyes and ears, and Will from America for his fantastic theme song. Until next time, everybody, we'll check you out at your next day.